fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hail silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Up the trail, big fellow. I'll Silver. It was evening. Old Jim Farrell, owner of the Circle B, sat in the ranch house talking to Bert Harkness, lawyer and hotel owner in the nearby town of Red Rock. So you want to make a will at last, huh, Jim? Why the sudden desire for a will? I've never heard you mention any near relatives. I want to leave everything to my son, Ted. Your son? Well, I've known you a long time, but I've never heard of you having a son. <laughs> Surprise, huh? So lots of others be. Where is this boy you speak of? Back east. He said I was on him since he was a baby. Well, I'll be... Yep, surprising, ain't it? It was nigh on to 22 years ago I bid Lucy and our newborn son goodbye and come out here to lay mistakes. Lucy died, and the boy was raised by Lucy's ma. Must be quite a man by now, I reckon. Have you kept in touch with him? Oh, off and on. We've been riding back and forth. Most letters have been coming from his grandma, though. Uh, Lucy's ma, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it uh, seems like she ups and died, and Ted, he's coming out here. Just got word yesterday. That note on the table come by Pony Express. Read it if you have a mind, Ted. Hmm. I'm alone now, Des, and I thought we should be together. But of course, up to now, I couldn't leave poor Grandma, and she wouldn't go west. I'm coming out now to be with you and to learn to be a good rancher. I expect to arrive in Red Rock about the 2nd of May. Well, you say, Jim, that's day after tomorrow. And there's a stage doing that morning. Oh, that's what I figured. I would have to have this blame rheumatics in my leg so I can't meet him... Well, one of the ranch hands will have to go for him. Would your son know you if you did meet him? Did he ever get a picture of you? Well, Harkness, you know, blame well nobody get me in front of one of them doggone tin-type gadgets. Nope, we never got around to seeing pictures of each other. Well, why couldn't I meet him at the stage and bring him out here for you? I'll take no need for you to go putting yourself out. Well, no trouble at all. Glad to do it. Well, it's mighty nice of you to do that. I think nothing of it. <laughs> Well, I'll be getting back to town. Well, I'll be looking for you with my son day after tomorrow, then. I'll get him here safe and sound. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Adios, Jim. Bye, Harkness, and thank you. The next afternoon, Harkness, accompanied by one of his friends, journeyed from Red Rock to Carlo Gulch on business. They were standing in the cafe when a strange young man of nice appearance entered. Say, Chuck... 
I wonder who that fellow is. I don't know. Why? I have a reason for asking. I've been doing some thinking about a certain matter. I could use a young fellow like him, if he were willing to play along. No harm in asking him to join us in a drink. He looks like a stranger around here. That would just suit my purpose. Call him over. All right, if you say so. Hey, young fella. Come here a minute. Are you speaking to me, mister? Yeah. My friend here wants to have a word with you. Oh. (laughs) Here I am. What's this all about? You're a stranger around here, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, what about it? You don't look like the usual type who come to settle in the West. Oh, I'm from St. Louis. Came out here for reasons of my own. Mm -hmm. I thought you were a city chap. I could offer a young fellow like you a good proposition if I knew you'd play along with me. If there's anything worthwhile in it for me, maybe I might. Any folks around here know you? No. Got in only yesterday. I'm uh, sort of handy with cards, if you know what I mean, so I came out here to try my luck. I see. Well, if the plan I have in mind can be put over, you'd make yourself a nice little pile without having to count on luck. Count me in, then. My name's Nelson. Good. Good. I'm Bert Harkness from over at Red Rock. This is Chuck, a friend of mine. Glad to meet up with you, Nelson. Howdy, Chuck. <laughs> Mr. Harkness, what's the proposition you say you have? Well, we can't talk about it in here. We'll go somewhere so as we can talk in private. But I can tell you this much. If you accept my proposition, then from now on you'll be changing your name. Change my name? Yes. Instead of Nelson, your name will be Ted Farrell. Son and heir of old Jim Farrell, owner of the Circle B Ranch. The biggest spread in this section of the country. On the morning of May 2nd, Dan Reed and Tonto rode into Red Rock to get supplies. After making their purchases, they returned to the hitch rack where Victor and Scout were waiting. I hope we didn't forget anything, Tonto. Um, me think we not forget anything, Dan. <laughs> Victor sees us coming. Uh, you know, he doesn't uh, like it when uh, I tie him to a hitch rack. And Scout anxious to get going, too. Uh, easy, Victor. We'll get away from here as soon as we can. Oh, stage from me is coming in now. Uh, it's a stage, all right. I always like to watch a stagecoach come in. Stage always bring new people. News from outside. Oh, Harkness fella come from hotel. Meet someone, Eddie. Oh, 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 Hey, young fellow, are you Ted Farrell? Well, yes. Yes, I am. Uh, are you my... <laughs> no, I'm not your father. Oh. Just a friend. I'm here to take you out to the Circle B Ranch. Your father couldn't come in this morning. Is there anything wrong? Oh, no, no, no. Touch of rheumatism, that's all. So my buckboard's across the street. Shall we get going? Your father will be waiting. Just as you say. Here's my bag. Oh, good. Follow me. The buckboard will be out there in no time. Oh. Him nice looking young fella. Yeah. I heard him say his name is Ted Farrell. Oh. Me not know old rancher at Circle B have son. Now come, Dan. We go back to camp now. All right. Steady, Victor. <coughs> Get him up, Scout. Come on, Victor. As Dan and Tonto rode away from the town of Red Rock, Harkness hurried Ted Farrell over to the buckboard and urging the horses into a gallop, they set out in the same direction on the way to the Circle B Ranch. A short time later, the buckboard swayed along the trail some distance behind Dan and Tonto. I guess that's about all there is to tell about my life in the East, Mr. Harkness. I hope you don't think me too inquisitive for asking you about yourself, Ted. Not at all. As an old friend of your father's, I was interested to know. Well, before you know it, you'll be home. Huh. Home? I'll have to get used to calling the ranch my home. And I'll, I'll have to get used to having a father around, too. Yes, I guess you will. Hey, sounds like somebody coming behind us. Why, it, it's two masked men. What, maybe they're going to... Pull up there! Pull up there! The next shot won't go over your head! Who, who there? Who, 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 who. Uh, what's the meaning of this? Never mind the questions. We got you covered, and if you don't want to taste lead, you better do what we say. Uh, if this is a holdup, uh, we really don't have anything worth taking, so I don't... Shut up, you, and get out. Get out? Well, what for? Get out, or we'll pull you out. Now, make it fast. What? Guess we'd better do as he says, Ted. 
They look like they mean business with those guns. Yeah, darn right we mean business. You're staying where you are. We just want the young fella. Come on, get moving. Oh, all right, I'll get down. Now what do you want? Come here, Nelson. Get off your brunt and climb into the buckboard. Oh, uh, see here, you can't get away with Don't us. Don't talk so much, mister. Sit right there beside that hombre and keep him covered, Nelson. Now drive on with that buckboard. Get up there. Get up there. A short time later, Dan and Tonto reached the point where they turned off to go to the Lone Ranger's camp. As they were about to leave the trail, they heard the distant noise of the buckboard approaching. Sound like Harkness buckboard of young feller on way to Farrell Ranch. Yeah, I guess it is, Tonto. Let's pull up off the trail till they go by. Ah, uh, most kind of pull. Pull on here. Pull. <laughs> you made it look like the real thing, all right. <laughs> Same young fella we see get off stage. You're right, Tato. Harkness was in that buckboard, but that fella beside him wasn't the one who said he was Ted Farrell. They're heading for the Circle B Ranch. Uh, me think something plenty wrong, Dan. Me not tell you, but me hear distant shots while ago. Then you think something might have happened to Ted Farrell back in the trail? Yes, Dan. You ride to camp. Tell Lone Ranger to come here. Me ride back now and have a look along trail. All right, Tato. Come on, Victor. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> While Tonto rode back along the trail, Dan went on to the camp where he told the Lone Ranger what they had seen. Leaving Dan at the camp, the Lone Ranger mounted his great white stallion silver and set out to meet Tonto. Before long, he came upon Tonto studying the marks on the trail where the holdup had been taken place. Oh, Silver, oh boy, oh, easy now. Well, Tonto, looks as though you found something there. Ah, uh, buckboard tracks pull off the side of trail here. In fresh tracks, the two horses go that way. To right, Kimasabi. Dan told me about seeing Ted Farrell in town getting off the stage. That the young man was not in the buckboard when it passed you. Not true, Kimasabi. Young fellow who passed in buckboard with Harkness. Not same young fellow who call himself Ted Farrell. Hmm. I think we'll follow those tracks to the right there and see where they lead us, Toto. Me think young Farrell fella in plenty trouble. Hey, big fella. We'll soon find out. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Meantime, Harkness and his companion in the buckboard followed the trail toward the Farrell Ranch. As they approached the road leading into the ranch house, Harkness pulled the horses to a halt. Whoa there, whoa boy, whoa there, What are you stopping for? Yeah, that's the place over there, Nelson. Oh, looks like a very prosperous ranch. Circle B is one of the finest spreads around here. I want to make sure you have everything straight before we arrive there. I think I've got everything straight. Good. Did you memorize that note I sneaked from the old man? Yeah. I know it word for word. And keep in mind the things I told you that I found out from young Farrell about his past life. Oh, I'll remember. In fact, I know so much I'm beginning to feel I am Ted Farrell. Once that will is signed, well, I have a feeling old Jim Farrell will have an accident of some kind. Chuck will take care of the real Ted Farrell, and then you... As the heir to old Farrell will own the Circle B, which you'll sell to me at my price. And you can leave this territory for good. It's rather risky, Harkness, but maybe it'll work out. If we play it right, it's bound to work out. I've always wanted to own that spread, and I'm willing to take chances to get it. Yeah, I didn't figure on tying in with any killings, Harkness. You're in this too deep to back out now, so don't go getting cold feet. Chuck and I'll take care of the two Farrells. All you have to do is to play your part well. And if you don't, well, maybe there'll be one more killing than we counted on, if you get what I mean. Now we'll go in so you can meet your long-lost father. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the tracks of the two horses far into the hills. As they rounded a large rock near the narrow trail, the Lone Ranger suddenly brought Silver to a halt. Hold oh, Silver, hold oh, on. Easy now. Hold, hold. Easy, big fella. 
Look there, Toto. Ah, old cabin. Two horses near. We ride over to that cabin and see who's there. We think we ride into trouble there, Kimasabi. If there's trouble ahead, we'll be ready for it. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Somebody open the door, Kimasabi. Watch out, Toto. The man in the doorway has a rifle. Pull up. We'll talk to him from here. Hold. Hold, Silver. Hold. Hold, Silver. Hold. We want to see who's in that cabin with you before we leave. Ain't nobody here but me. Now get going. Where's the rider of that other horse? I tell you, I'm here alone. Now turn around, get going, or I'll shoot you down. I'm convinced you're not telling the truth, Tonto. We're going to close in. You circle to the left, I'll go to the right. Tonto ready when you give word. All right, the sneaking coyotes, yes for it. Now, Tonto, boy, Silver. Come up, Scout. No. Oh, Silver, ho, ho. You all right, Tonto? Send big fella. Oh, Scout, oh, fella, oh, 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 fella. Uh, me all right, Kimasabi. Fella, get shot in the arm. Oh, my arm. Take care of his arm, Tonto, and don't let him play any tricks. I'll take a look in the cabin. Somebody's in that bunk over there. <coughs> Just a moment, and I'll loosen that gag. There. Oh, that's better. Now to cut these cords on your ankles and wrists. There. You're wearing a mask. Say, you must be that other man who held up the buck, the buckboard. What'd you do with Mr. Harkness? You're mistaken. I'm not the man you think. If you're Ted Farrell, I'm your friend, which is more than can be said for Mr. Harkness and the way things are turning out. I am Ted Farrell, but who are you? And why have you come to help me? Now, wait, wait, Ted. I want you to trust me and don't ask any questions just yet. That wasn't an ordinary holdup back there a while ago. I have reason to believe your father's going to have trouble, too. And we've got to work fast if we're going to help him. All right. I believe you're my friend. I'll do whatever you say. Good. Come with me. Ah, that fellow Ted Farrell who get off stage. Bad man able to go when ready. Me fix his arm, me got his gun. Help him on his horse, Toto. You ride the other one, Ted. You ain't taking me no place. Get on, horse, quick! All right, all right. <coughs> Where we go now, Kimasabi? Steady, Silver. Right now, we're going back to our camp, Toto. I want to have a good talk with this outlaw. Also, Ted and I have some things to discuss. After we get there, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Now, come along with me, outlaw. Get him up, Scout. Yeah, yeah boy. Come on, Silver. After carefully going over their plans, Harkness and Nelson drove to the ranch house of the Circle B. Harkness took young Nelson into Mr. Farrell. The old man accepted the imposter as his son without question. Harkness left, saying that he would return that night with the will which had been drawn at Mr. Farrell's request. That evening, Tonto, who had been following instructions given him by the Lone Ranger, rapidly approached the camp. Tonto! Oh, Scott, oh, Tonto! Oh, 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 oh. Easy, Silver. Steady now. Steady, big fella. Tonto, I rode out here to wait for you so we can talk freely. And at the camp with young Farrell and the outlaw. I may find out plenty, Kimosabe. Did you get a chance to spy around the Circle B? Me talk to ranch cook. Him say Harkness bring home rancher's son Ted. I see. What else? Harkness come back tonight to bring Will for old man to sign. So that's it, huh? And they're really putting it over. Now, what about Harkness after he left the ranch today? Me follow him on trail. Him go straight to Red Rock. Not go near cabin. Good. Then he doesn't know what's happened. Now we'll go to the camp, Tonto. A little later tonight, the folks at the Circle B Ranch will have some uninvited guests. Come on, big fella. Get him up, Scout. Later that night, Harkness returned to the Circle B Ranch house. He was seated in the living room talking to Mr. Farrell and Nelson. You're fortunate to have such a nice young fellow for a son, Jim. Yep, I guess I am a dad, Jim. Did you bring over that paper you were going to fix up for me? Sure did. You got it right here in my pocket. Yes. Yeah. You know, Harkness, uh, there's one thing I forgot to have you put in this way. Oh, well, what did you forget, Father? Yes, Jim, what do you mean? I drew that up, leaving everything to your son here. You said oh, I, I want to leave everything to Ted, all right, but I want you to write in a condition to that will. A condition? What sort of a condition, Jim? Well, I spent 20 years making this ranch the finest one hereabouts. It means a great deal to me. And a will to Ted, too, if he takes proper care of it. Well, that's what I came out here for, Father. Help you run the place and to learn to be a good rancher. Well, I'm glad to know you want to be a rancher like your dad, Ted. 
I'd like the Circle B to be a sort of a monument to my name. A legacy to be handed down from one generation to another. Just what are you getting at, Jim? How do you want me to change the will? I hope for Ted to get married and have a son of his own someday. A son who can take over the Circle B and keep it going. That's why I want you to say in that will that Ted must never sell or trade off any part of this spread. He'll always make a good living and be respected as the owner of the Circle B. You mean your son won't get the ranch unless he lives up to that condition? That's right. But I know Ted won't have no objections, will you, son? Well, I... Hey, wait a minute. I'll bet he put that idea in your head. After making a deal with me, he's planning to double shut up, Harkness. I knew nothing about that condition until just now. What's that you say, Harkness, about my son making a deal with you? You mean to say that Ted... He doesn't know what he's talking about, Father. Oh, don't I? You listen to me, Nelson, before I... Now, hold on a minute. Maybe you take me for an old fool, but I'm beginning to see things right. You just made a slip, Harkness, in calling him Nelson. I'm beginning to think that fellow ain't my boy at all. Why do you say that, Father? Haven't I... No use you acting any longer, Nelson. The old man's suspicious, and you might as well own up to the truth. Tell him you aren't his son. Well, you... Put up that gun, Nelson. No use us jumping at each other's throats. We can still make things go our way if we work together. Not, not after you gave away our plan. Oh, it was planning to trick me out of the ranch by having this sneaking vomit pose as my boy, huh? You'll sign that will as it is, Jim Farrell, right now. That wouldn't do you any good now that I know he ain't Ted. When Ted does get here, you see to it that you two low that down... That son of yours will never get here, Farrell. I've already seen to that. You'll sign that will and then... Well, you won't be around to tell anybody that Nelson here isn't your real son. No, sir. I ain't sending that paper. I thought that ornery critter was too slick-like for Farrell. You'll sign it all right. Keep trying to scare me with that gun, man. Eh? I don't intend to argue with you. I mean what I say. If I do sign that will, you'll shoot me anyway. Is that it, you murdering coyote? Don't take time to argue with him, Harkness. Go ahead and shoot. I ain't going to sign. Go ahead like he says, Harkness. I didn't tell you before, but I'm as good at faking names as I am at playing cards. I'll sign it so it'll look like he signed it himself. The forger. Well, you won't get away with it. I'll take that paper. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> If I didn't have this rheumatism in my leg, Harkness, you wouldn't have dared to hit me old as I am. Get it over with, Harkness. Shut him up and let's get that will signed before anybody comes. You get out of here and I'll tell the ranch hands I found my father murdered. All right, Jim Farrell, you ask for it. Hold it. I have you both covered. A mass man. Drop that gun, Harkness, quick. All right, all right. But I'll get you without it. Nelson, get the old man. Shoot him. Oh, no, you don't. You kill her. You missed. Now I'll give you a chance to use your fist, you sneak. Oh, ah, that's you a good hitting, young fella. No mess, Cumbria's Oh, cool. you're wrong. Ah, good fighting, strangers. Oh, you got here just in time. They was aiming to kill me off. I, I reckon they already did away with my boy, my, my Ted, who is coming out here to be with his old dad. Maybe your hopes can still be fulfilled, Mr. Farrell. Take a good look at this young fellow here. Huh? I... Do you mean he's... Dad. Yes, Mr. Farrell. This is your real son, Ted. My, my boy. My Ted. Uh, now that I, I look at you, I can see that you're the spitting image of your dad when he was young. And, <laughs> and your fight just as good, too. He almost kept you from me, son. Yes. These two men had it well planned, Mr. Farrell. Harkness there, whom you trusted as a friend, planned to do away with you and your son and take over your ranch. Gee, Dad, if it hadn't been for the masked man, we'd never have been together. One of Harkness's men almost finished me off. I suspected all the time that young nincompoop wasn't my flesh and blood. That's why I thought about putting a condition in my will, just to see what he'd say about it. Uh, uh, there comes the ranch hands. Must have heard that shooting. Good. They can take care of these two outlaws. I see that they're taken to the sheriff at Red Rock. Well, the boys might get overexcited on the way, so Ted and me will ride along with him. Even if my rheumatiz kills me, I wouldn't miss taking him in, stranger. Fine. It's best to let the law take its own course. What's going on in here? We heard shooting. Ah, uh, boys. Boys. This here's my son, Ted. Those two critters resting easy like on the floor tried to kill him and me to get the Circle B Ranch. Who's the masked man? He must be with those killers. Let's string them all up. Uh, now, yeah. hold on, hold on. Take it easy. That masked man saved our lives. <laughs> that is, with the help of my son here. <laughs> and there ain't going to be any stringing up either. 
We're all riding into Red Rock to hand these coyotes over to the sheriff. Come here, son. Uh, it's sure good to have somebody around to call me dad. Boys, from now on, Ted here is boss man of the Circle B. I've seen him fight, so I know he can handle the job. <laughs> He's a chip off the old block. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dad. We both owe our thanks to the masked man. I want to shake his hand and tell him how much it means to both of us. Yes, uh, so do I, son, but, so do I. Uh, where is he? Why, he isn't here. He, he's gone. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>